Hi, this is Connie Rodriguez from Art and Soul Matter Studio. And today I'm presenting you with a workshop on how to start a painting and how to begin painting. Yes, they're different, and I'll talk about that. So this is a workshop from Painting from the Inside Out. So, how do you start a painting? Most people say, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this big white canvas? So anytime you have a canvas, or it could be paper, Strathmore watercolor paper is what I use, you start out, you have a big white canvas, you're saying, ah, what do I do? What I do is I always gesso my paintings first. So gesso is a product that you put on whatever surface you're going to paint on. So if that surface is canvas, paper, wood, it doesn't matter. You always need to gesso your painting first. So this, this comes in different sizes. I use a lot. I like Liquitex, and you don't have to use as much. But because I do so much painting, I try to buy as much as I can. It's a little bit less expensive. And speaking of less expensive, I like to buy my products online. Cheap Joe's is a great place to shop. Blix or Utec, Utrecht Art. All right, so here I've splattered some gesso, poured some on. It's probably not going to be enough, but I'll show you what I do. Before I even get started, I like to use this product called Art Guard because not only do I use paint brushes, credit cards, but I use my hands to paint them. And getting paint out of my nails and so forth, it's, it's, it's kind of, this just washes it right off. This is, this is a great product. I highly recommend it. There's plenty on the market, but basically this one is called Art Guard. Okay a few minutes for that to dry. I have my water. I'm left-handed. So if I'm, if you're right-handed, you're going to put your water here, right? So I'm going to put my, I know, seems simple. I've seen so many students put their water over here and they're left-handed or vice versa. So always put your water here. And I like to use a lot of water. I don't change my water often. You can if you want. Okay, so Another tool, your paintbrush, but eh, it takes too long to put gesso on with paintbrush. I'm going to use a credit card. So I'm just going to start wiping this on. And I'll take a day or two just spreading gesso on my canvases so that they're all ready for me. And I'm ready to paint. It doesn't take very long. You can put it on again with a paintbrush, but I prefer this method with a credit card. And yes, the credit card's old. It doesn't work anymore. Okay, so I can see some marks and lines on here. I don't know if you can pick that up with a camera. Can you see those lines? I like those on there sort of a trademark for me. I like to keep them on my painting. And don't forget the sides. The sides as well. See, I need a little bit more gesso. I'm just going to plop right on top of the surface. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, so if I have extra left over, I can scrape it up, put it back in the, the, bar, the bottle, sorry, jar. Or I can use it for another painting. So I love gesso. Gesso is my white paint. Gesso can be used as a veil. I like to use gesso with colors. Okay, so yeah, it can get kind of messy. I have a little bit extra here. I'm going to scrape some off and grab up another 
canvas even though this has got some color on it that's okay because now I'm using this gesso as texture so that when it dries I'm going to have all these beautiful lines for texture. So I'm all about texture. I think paintings are more interesting when they're textured and when they have interesting things in them. So when you look at them far away, the painting invites you to come closer, take a closer look. Okay, so that's, that's this canvas and that's done. I have to wait till this gesso dries. It takes about 24 hours. I'm going to plop this back into my water, hands clean, and I'm going to show you a couple things you can do after your canvas is gessoed. So, one of the things you need to know about gesso is you can color it yourself, you can paint right over it. Or you can start with a colored gesso, which you can buy. So this painting behind me, I actually started it with a gold gesso. And it's beautiful, all gold. It's made by Daniel Smith. Comes in a container like this. Probably you can buy it larger. But Daniel Smith. And you can get lots of different colors. But, you know, I don't know if you would want to buy all those colors. Since I can't make gold, I can make other colors. So, I like to start my paintings with a yellow background. So this one started out with a yellow background. So this, this yellow may not be the yellow I started with, but a yellow background really brightens a painting. So even if I'm gonna use a, a blue sky, this is a yellow sky, right? Skies aren't always like blue, right? So let's say I wanted to do a blue sky. I would still use a yellow color and put blue on top of it. And I'll show you in a minute a painting in which I did that. So, okay, so we're gonna find, you have your dried gesso board. And pretend this is dry. You can actually do this with it wet, it doesn't really matter. One of my very favorite colors to start out with is Naples Yellow. This is more of a student grade paint, Liquitex. And I do really love Golden's, especially Golden's fluid paints. But for the background, I'm gonna use a student grade paint, Liquitex. And again, I'm going to plop that right on top. So I could have mixed this together in a mixing tin or a plate with my gesso and put it on as yellow gesso. But sometimes I, I will use a different color. So back to my credit card. I do a lot of painting actually with credit cards palette knives, fingers. My brush is really my least favorite thing to paint with. Okay, so I'm an expressionist painter. I'm not a realist. I'm not quite abstract. Sometimes I'll do abstracts. But expressionist is more about what a place feels like. It brings a feeling to your painting. So it tells a story, and I'm all about telling a story in my work. So again, I'm going to just stain this, I might think of it that way, in this yellow color. And whatever I do is going to, this going to be on this yellow. You may not even see the yellow when I'm done. So of course if this gesso is dry, it wouldn't be white and yellow. I kind of like it actually. It's kind of fun. So in the next YouTube, you'll see how we take this painting and add texture to it, more texture, making using saran wrap, bubble wrap, drips. It's 
really fun. So really, in starting a painting, you're thinking about creating backgrounds. Always create backgrounds. When the backgrounds are all completed, then you can put your subject on top of the background. So, beginning with yellow, letting this dry. Then here's another painting I started with, yellow. Gesso, yellow. Yellow peeks through right here. Mm -hmm. Just kind of brightens it up. So you want always to have your painting have a pop to it. So we're looking at texture, we want to create depth, and we want it to pop. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this YouTube video. I hope you put it to use. And join me again for the next place that we'll go in painting backgrounds. See you next time. Bye.